green stick to journal, journal to green stick, lip sync and air guitar in front of the mirror, journal to green stick. This was the world I felt safe in, me being someone else. I was worried about Pop, but at the same time he was worried about me. If I wasn't flopping around in bed with a green stick twirling in my hand, I was dressing up in different costumes and acting out scenes in front of the mirror. Fly, don't. Fly. God, really, we're fucking doing this! <sighs> Caught the fucker, but didn't kill him. Every time I go out the fucking piss, I get... Just fucking read, Dana! Where the fuck am I? He would just shake his head and go to his room with a mumble. That boy was either a genius or a totally fucking stupid lunatic. I still don't know which. Finally, after several weeks of this, there was the... You were spending too much time in that head of yours. You need to get out of the house and stop worrying about a dying old man. I'm fine, Pop, I replied. Hoss, go be a kid. It's great that it's also a hundred fucking degrees right now. And... Dana, just stop. Hoss, go be a kid. Stop worrying about me, damn it. Get out of this fucking house and go. Find a girl. Go fishing. Go fishing with a girl. Find things to write about. You can tell me the story when you get it done. But fuck a chicken. Go! I gave Pop a gentle smile. Said okay. And took off for the woods. One of my favorite places to hang out was the old iron bridge at the edge of town. <laughs> God, I love that bridge. We had three bridges in our town. Two, two of them were old iron magical. <laughs> anyway, I could fill another book with those stories. One of my favorite places to hang out was the old iron bridge at the edge of town. A giant of rusted metal and rickety boards. The thing had been falling apart long before I was born. Every time a vehicle drove onto it, the boards would give off a loud bang and thump, 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 that echoed through the woods. I don't know why, but I love that noise. Bang! Thump, thump. Ba -boom. Every time. From third graders riding their bikes through the trails and over dirt ramps to seniors in high school trying to find a safe place to make out and everyone in between, the bridge in the woods around it was the favorite hangout. I was surprised to see that I had the bridge all to myself. This was a very rare occasion, and I felt like I got the last piece of fried chicken when there were two prizes in the Cracker Jack box. It's way too hard for me to put that fucking shirt on. Just leave me alone, flies. Just please leave me the fuck alone. The last big flood buried a giant log into the side of the river bank. It was a massive tree that extended out to the middle of the river, and the best place to sit was all the way at the very end. The branches made a perfect seat, and there were places to set your drink, tablet, fishing pole, Whatever you had with you, it was dubbed the cool log, and how you were, and how cool you were depended on where you sat. Always being one of the small kids, I usually avoided the cool log drama altogether by sitting on the bank, or not at all. But I couldn't pass up the chance to sit out over the edge all to myself. Just inches above the slow-moving waters, it felt like the rest of the world had stopped. Just for me. There were no screams in my head. There was no sickness killing my grandfather. 
There was no homework. No Yankee grin thing waiting for me in my dreams. There was the river. Me. My journal, and that was it. I was in kid heaven, and the world was mine to create. Thump, thump, boom, 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 thump, thump. The cars moved above me with their drum beat, while underneath me the waters moved with a constant trickle and occasional splash. Thump, thump, boom, 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 thump, thump. Completely lost in my head, I didn't notice someone had climbed out with me. Mind if I take a look? Startled, I almost fell off the log and into the river, but a hand steadied me as the same voice full of laughter said, Easy, I don't bite. Not in the beginning. Recovering my balance, I looked up at the keeper of the hand and almost fell into the water again. <laughs> perched, on, perched on the log like a beautiful, seductive panther, was a long and muscular teenage girl I had never seen before. Her hair was shaved, a black stubble on her left side, while the right was a rainbow of different colors that fell to her shoulders. She was wearing a black t-shirt that she tied in a knot. Large round breasts tried to break free from the shirt as a six-pack of muscles rippled down to white hips. Her jeans were midnight black and as tight as my throat, which I suddenly noticed would not let me swallow. There were more holes than jeans, and any space not filled up, the skin sticking out had various words and phrases written in different colors of paint. Her eyes were dark as coals, but bright as the stars on a new moon. Her eyelashes were long, and every time she blinked, I could feel them caress my heart and make it stop. She was smiling at me, and looking at me like I was some strange animal she was about to discover and devour. I wanted her to do that more than anything in the world. She was everything that Devon's side wasn't, and I was immediate, immediately in love. Giving me a smile, a nod, and with a dark voice full of fire and dreams, she said, Hey. I smelled it from great and from glaciers, and planets realigned by the time I was able to find the nerve to say in the squeaky Peter Brady voice, Hi! She sat down next to me, her shoulder gently touching my shoulder. She took the journal from my trembling hands. Without touch, a soul will not shine. Without touch, a soul only, only stares at its memories like old classic movies that have a place in the heart. But there are only a distant thought. When the barriers vanish with a simple touch. When touch is so vital. So important. I hope these arms are all that you can feel. I hope I am holding you too close. Mmm, I like where it is going. She said, handing me, the, handing me back the journal. Shoulder to shoulder. I just stared at her with a goofy look on my face until she let out a laugh, rolled her eyes, and said, Well, start working on it. Um, while you sit here? I said with my mousy voice. No, doofus, in the river. And for a split second, I actually looked down at the river and contemplated jumping in for her. I laughed, grabbed my pen, and tried to write. Well, this punk goddess of love sat next to me. I would have lifted off the ground and flew away if it wasn't for the fact that she put her chin on my shoulder to watch me write. She smells so sweet and dark. Oh my God, our cheeks are touching. And I need to write something, but what? Oh my God. I can't write anything. Oh my God, I, I write something, right? My God, she is letting me sit next to her. You are not writing, she whispered into my ear. All thought vanished, and there was a singular voice that spoke in my head, and my hand heard it quite clearly. There was a moment of silence as she leaned forward, her cheek touching my cheek and resting her hands on my shoulder, 
like it was just a normal, everyday thing we would do. <sighs> Suddenly, I was someone else. I was confident that I knew I could do this, and everything else just vanished. Her perfume was a deadly, sweet feeling on an autumn day before a summer storm came in for one final dance. Every time she moved, it was like a dream slowly cascading, cascading over my eyes and into my heart. Oh, I like this, she whispered in my ear. I like this a lot. Five little words can have so much power over someone. She liked it. No, even better. She liked it a lot. This older rebel of a woman, whom I've never met before, just sat down next to me, read my stuff, and she liked it. <laughs> Sitting on a log over the quiet, steady river, I felt my chest puff out in pride. I felt the floodgates of creativity open up. And somehow I found the words to have even more confidence. My hand went back to the journal as I said in a very overstimulated and excited voice. I can make some more to write to I can I can more some write. I mean, I could write some more to you if you like. Without waiting for an answer, I grabbed my pen, looked into her eyes, and her smile for as long as I could handle. Then I set my hand free on the pages. She scooted even closer to me as she put her chin back on my shoulder. And with a whisper that sent shivers through my wanting soul said, Mmm, that would be nice. For one brief time-stopping moment, I was no longer me. I was the confidence of all the heroes I read. I could hear Byron, Neruda, and all the love they put on their pages. I could feel them singing inside of me, and whomever I was, I was a boy who could write a powerful love poem to an incredibly beautiful, exotic, and strange woman, and she would like it. You are my canvas, my fingers the brush. If kisses were like daydreams, I would love to sit, create, and daydream with you all day. She moaned then, a soft moan that came from deep inside of her, and I'd never heard a woman moan like that before. The temperature around us suddenly went up ten degrees, and I could feel sweat rolling down my back as once again my trembling lips went dry as a desert wind storm. She kissed my cheek and whispered, Mmm, nice. Very nice. Trying to play it cool and failing miserably, I replied, I, I can write more for you. Laughing, she stood up and grabbed my hand. Come on. She pulled me along like a willing lamb to slaughter. Where are we going? Home. You can write to me and we will be warm. Like a full moon tide, she pulled me along. And I gratefully went with her. With that usual goofy smile on my face. Her name was Martha, and she lived across the river in a small white house that was always up for rent. God, that place was a piece of shit. It's right by the river. No, yeah. As we walked, she told me just to, she had just moved to Devon's side. She and her mom never stayed in one place very long, and if she actually went to school, well, she'd be a junior. But since they moved so much and her mom was never home, she just stopped going. Mom doesn't care. She spends most of her time in the bars. And the only time she comes home is when we move. <laughs> it was like I finally found someone that could understand and feel what I felt. I know I looked like that happy dog from Bugs Bunny. One that was all bouncy to hang out with Spike and 
jumped around him in excitement, constantly saying, Hey, Spike, what do you want to do? Huh? 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 Have a seat. I need a change. She kicked off her shoes and vanished into her bedroom. Remembering a Chevy Chase line from the movie Fletch, I replied, Oh, don't change. I like you the way you are. She poked her head around the corner. You are so adorable. I was adorable. The only furniture was a couch with a black comforter stretched over it and a record player with a tall stack of records beside it. The rest of the living room was empty, so I sat on the couch and waited. Martha walked into the room wearing nothing but a black Sex Pistols t-shirt that fell just below her waist and a pair of black tube socks that went up her long legs and stopped below her knees. I fell back on the couch as all the voices in my head sounded like a freight train screaming through my veins and into my loins. She sat down next to me, and as she did, I dared to glance down. And yes, I was correct. She was not wearing any underwear. The freight train whistled louder as I used every muscle and nerve I had to try and swallow. Do you like the way I changed? She said in that same cat-like purr she used at the river. All I could do was nod. Well, good. She rubbed her toe on my stomach. Now write me what you are feeling. The world as I know it went away. It would never, ever be the same when it returned. I can't remember all the things I wrote to her. I can't remember a single thing, actually. It seemed my memory was put on hold, and I was floating in this incredible cloud of desire. And all I could see, hear, taste, and smell was her. Hours went by as we sat on Martha's couch. She would read me poems from her. Fuck! Ow! Ow! Uh-oh! God damn it. Ten minutes before the memory runs out. Right, go as far as you can, dude. You get just go. You're almost, you're, almost, you're, almost, you're almost there. Where am I? Where am I? I don't. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, I had filled up a journal and was looking for another one when she grabbed my hand and put it on her thigh. Oh no, I'm not even close to finishing this chapter. Fuck. I felt... I felt, I felt warm. Smooth bare skin under my hand. And the freight train turned into a rocket. And I had no idea how I didn't vibrate off the couch and explode on the floor. If you write something powerful enough, I will let you write it on my body. She grabbed a sharpie from the floor and twirled it in her hand. And depending on how well you write it, depends on where you get to write it. 
oh my god, is this really happening? It was a pubescent miracle that I was able to speak or move at all. But somehow I did. And the next two hours were spent writing my poems on various places on Martha's body. My fingertips would caress her skin as I found the places to write and her moans telling me the places where I should keep going. I want to remember the words I wrote, but all I remember is her, the way she would twist her body and watch me with those punk goddess panther-like eyes, and she would smile. And that smile was a lifetime of pleasure, forgiveness, desire, and strength. That would be another song in me for the rest of my life. The whole thing didn't feel real. For a brief moment, I felt like I was back home asleep in my bed, and... Oh, shit! I yelled, jumping up as she was moving her leg for me to write on the inside of her thigh. What's wrong? Pop, my, my, my grandfather, he is, um... I haven't checked in for hours. Grabbing my things, I headed to the door. I am so sorry. I... I got... She got up off the floor walked over to me completely naked, and grabbed my shoulders. Hey, breathe. It's okay. I stood in the door, torn between wrapping arms around her and heading home. Go. You can find me again tomorrow. She kissed me on the head and sent me out the door. As I ran down the road, I looked back, and she was leaning in the doorway naked and beautiful, with that wicked smile on her face. I could still hear her giggling as she echoed in my head. You were so adorable. All right. I gotta clear some memories.